I want to show you guys, this is a seven and a half inch shear, 52 tooth. Typically shears are measured from right here before the pinky rest to the tip of the shear. The teeth are the amount of teeth that are on the shear. Now this is a Jody Murphy shear that performs almost identical to this Kenchi Sapphire blending shear. What I want you to notice is Jody Murphy shear is I believe a, a six inch or five and a half inch shear, but they're going to produce the same results because if you look at the teeth, they're going to remove the same amount of coat. There's the Jody Murphy and there's the Sapphire. The point is the space between the teeth, it's pretty much the same on both these shears. So why would you want to use the seven and a half versus a five and a half? Well, if you're doing faces, the small tidy areas, this is gonna feel good to you, especially if you're new to blending shears. This size shear is gonna feel good to you. If you want to be able to do more with your blending shear, like trim around the faces, as well as shape in down the legs, shape in the head, this shear gives you more real estate. It covers more ground. So you might like this. As a beginner, would you like that? I, I would say yes, I would have. When I started using blending shears heavily, most of them were small. This is what you got. And I liked it, but boy, you had to work hard. You had to work really hard in your grooms with a little shear like this. And then we started noticing a lot of bigger shears coming out. This is seven inch. This is the Jonathan David Lightning shear. This shear is actually a nice size. It covers a lot of ground. Now, now notice on this shear that each tooth is serrated. You see that? Which takes even more coat. So if you have serrated teeth on your blending shear, it's going to soften your trim even more so and remove just a little more coat than it would if it just had this space between the teeth. You'll also notice that on the sapphire shear, the end of each tooth is serrated. You won't see that on the Jody Murphy shear. See, that's blunt, like a straight edge. And you do see that on the Jonathan David lightning blending shear. These things make differences in the way the shears perform. So right here, guys, right in front of his eyes, we could take that with a tin blade, just using the corner of our tin blade. But I'm gonna take these Jody Murphy shears. You see how the teeth are very fine. There's a lot of teeth and there's not a lot of space between the teeth. That means they're not gonna take a lot of hair. So I'm just gonna kind of open up right here in front of his eye and a little bit in front of his, at the stop, which is right here between the eyes. And I'm kind of pull, blending forward like this. And because the shear is not too aggressive, it's gonna leave a nice natural look. One of the many benefits to using blending shears is to produce natural looking grooms, right buddy? So, right in the corner on a slant. And there's a natural look. Now, if I want it more aggressive, I can use my chunkers. So, let's just tidy up this line here. These behave more like a straight shear. Look at all the space between teeth that is how much hair they're gonna take off. So obviously if I'm using a soft blender here, it's gonna blend, but it's gonna take me all day and it's gonna look great and you could do this, but it's gonna take you all day. With a chunker, good job, Teddy. With a chunker, we're gonna get there real quick. Now he is a Westy coat. They typically have a little bit of a wire coat. I don't often use a chunker shear. I'm just showing you the difference. Right here in front of his nose, I'm gonna use my sapphire blending shear and you can see the teeth 
are very close together. Very carefully. Just tidying up all that hair that's hanging in front of his nose. Be very careful here. And this is probably a more of a something not for the novice around the nose there, guys. Your blending shears are just as sharp as your straight or your curved. I don't want you guys to ever forget that. But the nice thing about these shears, the sapphire blender, is that it produces a very soft look. So in those areas where we just wanna see subtle changes, these shears are great for that. Now right in here under his throat, coming down into his breastbone, I don't like to do too much with clippers because Teddy's hair is real thin here. So I'm just gonna tidy it up in a scissor action with a blending shear. And this is the, the gentle blender, right? The sapphire. I could come in here with a chunker, but I gotta be really mindful of what I'm trimming. I'm just coming up the little cowlick on the throat. Okay, bud. Remember, our chunker is gonna be much more aggressive and definitely take more coat. Now you can see, just to even things up, I'm looking at Teddy straight on. This is a great time to use those gentle blenders, the sapphire shear, because they're not gonna, they're not gonna take a ton, but they're just gonna totally soften. Good Teddy. Just flatten this down a little bit. Just keeping everything looking good. But I mean, they're removing coat, but not a ton. The uh, natural look that they leave is very beneficial versus if I'd have gone in there with a chunker, we would see that pattern that the chunker leaves because he has a wiry coat. So this one is very nice for that. Good boy, honey. It's okay. Just so subtle and so soft. And also if you scissored the outline of this Westy head, you could come over your lines with the blender shear to soften your lines. That's another thing that I like to do, especially with the sapphire blender. Soften my scissor lines and just make any scissor lines disappear. Such a good boy. See, it's almost just, it just makes everything fail proof, really. So right here's another place I like to use these very soft blenders. I'll just pull this little leg up nice and I'll just sort of blend down to the foot. I can come in here, lay some of this nicer. For the most part, I'm trimming the top coat as if it were scissoring, which is what makes this shear so nice on this coat, is scissoring with my blender. Good job, buddy. Can really scissor a dog with blending shears, especially a dog with this coat type. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you how to erase chap marks, scissor marks, uh, marks from your guard comb work. You can see them. You can erase them with the chunker shears. That's what I use them for a lot. Make sure your, your shear is facing the lay of the coat and you're just scissoring off any lines. You're scissoring them. You're dusting if you if you want to think of it like that, it's like dusting. Coming up here, you gotta use your comb, comb it up and just graze it off with your chunker shear in the lay of the coat. And you will hide all those marks. This can also be used to actually scissor and shape on the dog. You could outline the dog. Usually I do that with a straight shear. You could outline the dog with your chunker shear. So comb up, good. 
And with the, lay the, the way the coat grows, you just simply erase it. It's just so wonderful. This is one of my favorite uses for the chunker shear. Our guard combs are notorious for leaving marks. It's hard to avoid at times, okay? So don't think that you're doing something wrong. That's normal. That's how we just pulled that together and made it look nice, soft, and natural. Riley, you're a good boy. Please look happy. So one of my favorite ways to use the chunker shear. So let's do that again right here. Take a look right here, guys. I'm gonna make that blend in with the clipper work. I used a guard comb to set the length on him today. Fantastic use. Here we're gonna use it to outline. Now this is where I normally would go for a straight shear. Set the outline of leg. You can do it with a chunker shear. It takes a lot of coat. There's a lot of space between the teeth. Good boy, Riley. You can trim ears with these. These, I'd say, are a must-have. Chunker shears, absolutely. And now I'm using these Kenji Love 17 tooth chunker blending shears, and I'm just taking the tips of anything off that might have left a little harsh look from my scissor work. This is the easiest way to soften your whole look is these blending shears. They're $99. On this coat, they really, really just set you up for complete perfection when it comes to scissor work. You could do all of the work with your blending shears instead of using a straight or a curved. I just like to set the outline with a straight or a curved. It's just a little bit more finalized and aggressive. Tipping that little nose up. Gonna blend all that together. Good job, baby. Tidy this up here, anything that pops up. I'm rolling my shears back as I'm moving up towards the top knot. Blending all that in. You can just see the magic that these blending shears produce. And they're so fun to use. <laughs> I love them. Good job, baby. Baby Gaby, you are such a cool guy. I'm Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer, and on that channel, I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry, one that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives, as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome.